Bad news is good news. Good news is bad news. That's been the guiding light for investors the last 22 months. It wasn't the only focus, but it was certainly the force behind most decision making. God forbid the economy or the consumer were strong. That would mean only one thing. The Fed was going to keep their foot on the brakes and not let up until they snuffed the life out of any enthusiasm. Outside of energy, that mindset reigned on just about every sector of the economy last year. This year, we, of course, exploded out of the gate. And by the end of March, the major secular trend had taken hold. Large cap secular growth driven by tech and telecommunications rocked higher. Consumer discretionary led by mega cap heavyweights Amazon and Tesla, which represent 40 percent of the index, were close behind. So here we are in November on the heels of a better than 10 percent rally that lifted all asset classes, small caps, mid caps, bonds, even utilities bounced hard. Were the pundits finally right? The reversion to the mean trade was ready to take off? Dump your Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and pile into their smaller brothers and sisters. That's been the rallying cry for the last several weeks. Unfortunately, small companies are generally more tied to the economy. While the prospect of lower interest rates helps all stocks, small caps need one more thing. They need an economy that is picking up steam, not one that may finally be rolling over. Walmart's earnings report may have rained on that parade. While they raised guidance, it was short of street expectations, prompting calls that the consumer was finally tapped out. Management was concerned that deflation was starting to kick in and customers wouldn't have to pay as much. Well, I guess that's bad for Walmart, but is that how we should really look at this report? Trust me, it matters. The answer to that question may mean the difference between a bull and bear market. Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. Walmart was probably one of the more important earnings reports this week. Cisco was important, too, because it's a sign that enterprise spending might be slowing. I'm going to come back to Cisco in a minute. Walmart is often a report card on how good or bad the consumer is doing. We talked about this in the past. The consumer has miraculously held up this year, and that's kind of astonishing given all the headwinds. Higher rates are a continued drag on the economy and, of course, the consumer. Even in Goldman's report this week, they talk about the dark side of higher for longer. I agree with that statement. Eventually, it corrodes the financial plumbing and you start to feel it. You certainly felt it in the banks earlier this year. Today, 10-year rates are above where they were back in March, a level that in part was responsible for the collapse of Silicon Valley and signature banks. I'm harping on Walmart because it is so tied to the economy and ultimately the consumer. The biggest concern on the call was that deflation was going to affect sales in the future. Do the math. If consumers buy the same number of items and prices are lower, that forces declining sales. Well, the street certainly didn't didn't like that and sent shares down over 8%. Let's try to unpack the Walmart news a little differently. Yes, declining sales, bad for Walmart. In fact, any company. But is it really bad for their customers? I don't think so. In fact, in the long run, it might even be good for Walmart, too. Customers might take those savings and use it to buy discretionary items that have better margins. Traders didn't take it that way. Following the Walmart report, traders piled back in to large-cap secular growth names with Microsoft leading the way, 
breaking out to an all-time high. Piling into large-cap tech is largely a defensive move. Think of it this way. Most industries have much lower margins than tech. In retail, you're talking about single-digit margins with little room for error. You can go from making money to bleeding cash in a New York minute. The huge margins in technology offer a lot of breathing room. Microsoft net margins are over 30%. NVIDIA, almost 50 Sure, when things get tough, business slows down for them too, but those margins provide a lot of breathing room. The offensive move is buying into small caps, mid caps, and other companies more tied to the economy. And therein lies the question. Is the recent strength in small caps a sign that the economy is truly getting stronger or just a reversion to the mean trade from oversold levels? Unknown. I wish I had the answer to that question, but let me just say this. What you're really asking, is it safe for me to get into the market? Look, if you're not in the market already, it's too late to go all in. But you can start scaling in. There's no shortage of risks out there, but there always will be. One of the biggest risks has been an, an aggressive Federal Reserve, but even that is slowly coming to an end. Let's put this all together. We can debate the timing of a cut. We can even debate that a cut is coming. But what isn't up for debate is that the Fed is done raising rates. The bad news that the market has already priced that in. You can see that in interest rate probability charts. If you are looking for a rate hike, and most of the discussion is about when the cuts start and how many. Soft landing, yeah, that's priced in too. Will the Fed be able to stick that landing? The answer to that question may be the difference between making money or waking up the next morning the greater fool. All right, we're going to try something new this week. We're going to give ourselves a report card. What do we get right? What do we get wrong? All in, I give us a C minus. Trading in our main portfolio was not the smartest in the world. We have back to back inflation reports that rocked markets higher. CPI, PPI, both coming in softer than expected. The one decision we got right was selling half our Cisco right in front of earnings. It had fallen out of our quant model for a variety of reasons and has traded poorly since announcing a buyout of Splunk. I thought about selling it all, but in the end, we went halfway. We had a pretty big decline in the aftermarket, down about 11%, and that followed through the next day. We made a decision early on that morning, and we dumped the rest of it right after it opened. I'm okay with that. I thought that was a smart move. Unfortunately, that same morning, we had to deal with Walmart, which also missed expectations. We had a full position on, so that one hurt. It opened down 5 6%. We dumped about 40%, 40% of it very close to the open. I elected to hold the rest. It ended the day down 8%. For the rest of that day, retail was under siege. My screen of retailers and consumer discretionary stocks looked like it was bleeding to death. I looked at our raw stores position, which was set to report at the close. We had a small profit. I didn't want to lose it. I was concerned. Look, Ross is a solid company, but not cheap. And as retailers go, trading at 22 times next year's earnings, I knew, I just knew that if there was any hiccup in this name, it could have a pretty big decline. Maybe even worse than Walmart. It had fallen just outside of our model. I could have sold half, but I elected to sell it all. Well, the numbers were fine. In fact, same store sales were better than the street by a wide margin. The stock was up 8% after hours and one of the strongest performers the following day. Like I said, C minus. We're coming into a short week as we head into Thanksgiving break, but make no mistake, this will not be a quiet week. 
One of the most important earnings reports of the year is on deck with NVIDIA set to release earnings Tuesday after the close. <laughs> Holiday week or not, this one will move markets. The stock is up 230% this year with a lot riding on the success or failure of this AI heavyweight. I've said artificial intelligence is the most important investment theme of my career. A hit or miss won't change that. I'm David Nelson, and this is The Money Runner. Well, this is the point where I have to ask you for your support. If you like the podcast, I hope you'll hit subscribe. Comments, we love them. Let me know what you think. If you think I got it wrong, shout it out. Let's have a conversation. Thanks for joining. I'm David Nelson.